this video is sponsored by Xiaomi. The best camera is the one you have with you. I know, I know, it's a cliche thing to say, but in the end it is true. You can only take a photo if you have a camera with you. And in the hustle and bustle of everyday life, the one camera we usually always have with us is our phone. And even though many people shout, gear doesn't matter and say that you can take great images with any camera, phone photography is oftentimes not taken seriously and not treated as proper photography. And to be completely honest here, I am guilty of those double standards myself as well, since I used to view my smartphone snaps rather differently than my images taken on a dedicated camera. So in the end I guess there is just one way to find out if a phone camera would actually be capable of delivering professional results that could hold up to my regular work, and that is to try it out. First, if you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Karin Majuka and I'm a photographer based in Germany. And in today's video, we will take a closer look at Xiaomi's newest smartphone slash camera, the Xiaomi 14T Pro. Also, because I was rather curious to see if the Leica badge on the outside actually delivers Leica quality. As a disclaimer, this video was made in partnership with Xiaomi and since I'm a photographer it won't be a full review, but it will rather be a showcase of the photography features, talking about my experience after using this phone as my primary camera for the last weeks. More specifically, Xiaomi didn't only approach me to simply try out this device, but they actually challenged me to use this camera in the, at least in my opinion, most demanding circumstances you can think of night street photography. Night photography and street photography are by far my two favorite subject matters to photograph, so while I was extremely excited, I was also rather timid if I would be able to manage to do this with something like a phone. But actually I caught myself calling the Xiaomi 14T Pro a camera more often than a phone since it honestly almost feels like it. It also has a 1 inch sensor which is just as big as the sensor in most compact cameras these days, capturing impressive 13.5 stops of dynamic range. Further it has three Leica lenses. The wide Leica Sumilux lens, which is equivalent to a 23mm focal length, a 60mm telephoto lens and a 15mm ultra wide angle lens. These three lenses are equipped with extremely fast apertures between f1.6 and f2.2. And with these three lenses a range of focal lengths between 15 to 120mm is covered and coming from a fixed focal length setup, this is way more flexibility and variety than I'm used to. While I am a big fan of zooming with your feet, it was indeed a very fun experience to interpret a scene totally differently by using different focal lengths. Especially the telephoto lens was pretty fun since it's a focal length I haven't really used as much before, but it was definitely interesting to use it to isolate subjects and focus on more details in a scene. As I said before, I'm not so familiar with taking photos with a phone, but I'm more used to taking photos with dedicated cameras, both on film and digital. And the camera system that has been my home for many years now is the Leica M system. I've been using the Leica M6 for around 5 years now and added the Leica M10 a while ago as a digital counterpart. And the aspect I love the most about this camera system is the fact that I have full manual control over all settings. I have full control over the exposure triangle like aperture, shutter speed and ISO. What held me back from taking smartphone photography seriously for the longest time certainly was the lack of manual controls on many devices. Therefore I was very stunned to see that the Xiaomi actually has a pro photography mode where you can do exactly that, manually control all of your settings. In the pro mode you can control the white balance, the shutter speed, ISO and exposure compensation and set all or just some individual parameters to manual or leave them on auto. Also you can choose which aspect ratio you want to shoot with. 
either 1 to 1, 3 to 4, 9 to 16 or the full screen size, which is pretty cool because it forces you to think and compose in the aspect ratio rather than cropping later, just as I am used to with film. On top of that, there are plenty of other useful features to select from. You can for example select to show grid lines or exposure verification to indicate areas where too much light is falling on the image sensor. Also you can activate to see the histogram in the corner which is useful for judging tricky lighting situations. And also you can choose which way of exposure metering the camera shall use. And come on, that is pretty nerdy photography stuff right here. Also, there is the possibility to turn on focus peaking and you might guess it already, it can be paired with the option to also manually control your focus. I found the autofocus to be pretty reliable, but for some complex situations with many layers or reflections, it's actually pretty cool to be able to even control the focus all by yourself. In my opinion, one of the most crucial aspects about a photo is the overall look, which is highly shaped by the colors within the frame. And on the Xiaomi 14T Pro, you get to choose between two main color styles, Leica Authentic and Leica Vibrant, which were both also co-engineered with Leica. The way that the lenses and the image sensor render the light gives off this very characteristic look which is often known as the Leica look or Leica colors. And having Leica color science in such a pocketable device is pretty rad if you ask me. I do like both of the looks. With Leica Authentic the colors are a bit more muted and natural while they pop a bit more with the Leica Vibrant setting. However, I've used Leica Vibrant for the majority of the time, purely because it is the option that can be paired with shooting RAW at the same time. Yes, you've heard right, this tiny device here lets you shoot with 50 megapixels RAW. I'm no pixel peeper by any means and I don't necessarily always think that more is better, but if you like to zoom in to your images or crop a lot, I think it's actually nice to know that there's some wiggle room here. To be honest, the JPEGs look great straight out of camera, so the majority of the images you will see here are unedited. But the option of shooting RAW gives you more flexibility in post to apply your very own look. The few images I edited were edited with the same presets I also use for my Leica M10 files. They were super easy to work with, have a lot of leeway and let me achieve a look that blends in very well with my other work. However, if you want to stick to shooting JPEGs, you can also use built-in filters to create a more defined look. There are two color and two black and white filters created by Leica and also a variety of other filters that try to emulate more of a film look. And the cool thing is, you can apply and also change filters even after the image was already taken. By far, the Leica black and white high contrast filter was my favorite though, since the black and white images with this filter straight out of camera look punchy and contrasty with beautiful tonality, which honestly is harder for me to achieve through editing. One distinct element I enjoy about cameras is their design. Cameras that look and feel beautiful are cameras I'm more likely to pick up and actually have with me all the time. And with the Xiaomi 14T Pro, I can certainly say that I find the design to be pretty pleasing. It has this matte titan black finish, which has a slightly textured touch and feels very comfortable to hold. I also enjoy the little details, such as this groove button here. The phone is also incredibly slim, which makes it very comfortable in the hand, yet still fit in your pocket. I found myself holding the phone in a horizontal aspect ratio, just as I am used to with the default of my usual cameras. However, I noticed that shooting in portrait orientation had one incredibly big advantage, and that is the fact that you basically become invisible. Since people are so used to seeing other people holding their phones like this in public, no one would really expect you to take photos, since people assume you might just be browsing on social media. Also in situations like inside of a subway station, it can be a big advantage to be discreet since staff will sometimes kick out people with big cameras or tripods. The response time when pressing the shutter was also surprisingly fast. In a genre like street photography with fast moving subjects, timing is crucial, so having a delay or lag after pressing the shutter can make or break the shot. Night photography can come with a lot of challenges to look out for. Shooting at night, for example, requires you to shoot with high ISO values 
ideally without introducing too much noise into the image. And I was incredibly surprised that even in those super challenging situations, the images still looked very crisp, especially taken into consideration that I took all of these images handheld. For night photography, it's essential to capture as much of the available light as possible. And the combination of super fast Sumilux lenses and high ISO capabilities really make this device stand out for night photography. The maximum ISO differs between the three lenses, with the highest ISO being 12800 on the telephoto lens. But I found something around ISO 3200 to be a good middle ground. Shooting at night in situations with artificial light sources can further be a bit tricky when it comes to the white balance. And here I also think that the Xiaomi made a good job as well. The images give off this glowy, painterly vibe without being too warm or too cold. But of course, I'll let you be the judge. What do you think about the night shooting capabilities of the Xiaomi 14T Pro? Did you expect these types of results? And in general, since nowadays everybody has a smartphone, I would be interested to hear how you utilize it. Do you actually take photos with your phone? And if yes, how serious do you take your own phone photography? Let me know in the comments down below. One perspective I have on smartphone photography is the idea of taking visual notes. Since it is so easy and effortless to take out your phone and take a picture, for me it kind of acts like a notepad to document my surroundings. Due to the great range of focal lengths on this device, it feels like I can use it to actually get to know a scene and take notes which angles, positions or focal lengths might be best to capture the scene. And while I will probably always continue to also take photos with a dedicated camera, this experiment certainly showed me that smartphone cameras are not to be underestimated and that in the end an eye for composition and a feeling for the right moment is actually what counts the most. Once again, thank you to Xiaomi for sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video and helping me to tackle some of my own prejudice against smartphone photography. The best camera is in fact the one that you have with you and I think that we just have to face the reality that for many of us in this day and age, this camera will be a phone. And therefore I just think that it makes sense to make the camera you always have with you a camera that delivers.